From using a gaming sleeve to not using any RGB effects, here are 8 things Fortnite pros do that you don't. Starting off with custom crosshairs first, there's a lot of pro players out there who are using a custom crosshair as a way to eliminate crosshair inconsistencies in Fortnite, because if you actually do take a look at each crosshair for each gun, you'll notice that they're not the same. Most of them are different depending on which gun you use, and this isn't the best for having consistent aim with each weapon, as the graphic for each weapon of a crosshair graphic changes every time you pick a different weapon up, so in order to keep the actual graphic consistent, you'll see a lot of pro players out there like this guy on screen, as well as maybe Martos, he's considering it, you'll see them choose to use a custom crosshair like this white one on screen right here. And for those wondering if this is classed as bannable or not, if it's allowed, if it's not, it's something that I am not entirely sure on because Fortnite are pretty vague on their ruling for it so I'm really not sure. It's one of those that I'll just say to use at your own risk as the pros are obviously doing here. One other thing that I do know that pros are 100% using and is 100% allowed is anti-malware programs such as malware bytes. As you can see Clicks himself is using it right here. If we pause on his stream and then zoom into the bottom right corner you can see the blue icon which is the malware bytes icon and the reason for why he's using this is to protect his PC from any sort of viruses spyware, adware, and just a ton more of nasty things from slowing down his PC. As you guys know, if you have one of those nasty programs on your computer, this can indeed increase your input delay, making your movements a lot slower and just laggier overall. So it's really important to have an anti-malware program to protect your PC from this and to keep your PC overall healthy. Along with keeping your PC healthy, it's also important to make sure your setup is that way too, which is why pros always have a lint roller on the side of their desk beside them at all times because as gamers you will know how easy it is to get crumbs on your mouse pad hair on your mouse pad or even like things like dust on your mouse pad and what this lint roller does is it allows you to just simply pull off a thin layer of paper and this reveals a sticky layer underneath which you can then roll across your mouse pad and what that'll do is it'll pick up all that nasty stuff that can affect your mouse glide and in turn affect your aim negatively so by rolling that lint roller across picking up all that nasty stuff it'll make sure that your mouse is super clean super smooth so your mouse has the best glide and there'll be no sort of interference with crumbs, hairs, dust or whatever, it'll all be good to go. Another thing that pros do is increase their mouse DPI, which is what a lot of them actually did about a year ago. Mongrel, for example, went from using a mouse DPI of 800 to increasing it to 1600 so that his mouse has double the amount of pixels to work with. With double the amount of data slash pixels, that means it can actually reduce the input delay on the mouse as well as prevent any sort of pixel skipping from occurring. So because of those two reasons right there, that's why a lot of pro players out there are no longer using 400 DPI. Like if we go over to my website, that's gamesettings.com, where you can find out what all the pro players are using for games like Fortnite, CSGO and Valorant. If we go over to Fortnite here and just click on a random pro player, you can see that if we click on their profile and then go to their mouse settings, you can see most of their DPIs, like 9 times out of 10, will be on 800 DPI or higher. No one's using low DPIs like 200 or 400 anymore, they're all using at least 800 dpi or up to like 1600 to 2100 just basically any high dpi's work really well they make the dpi really high and then they make their in-game sensitivity really low so it obviously balances it out in the total edpi which i also have an edpi calculator on there so you can figure out what your overall edpi is which will help you with changing your dpi and your sensitivity but yeah overall i don't think many pro players use 400 dpi for reasons i've mentioned and another thing i don't see many pro players use use anymore is 360 hertz monitors. You know the most expensive monitors that are out there at the minute? Well there's a reason why pros don't use them and actually choose to use a 240 hertz monitor instead. The most obvious reason that many of you will know is the performance needed to actually run a 360 hertz monitor consistently. Like if we take Fortnite end games right here you can see they get super super hectic and crazy and a lot of FPS drops are happening. If not drops at least like fluctuations in FPS and in order to run a 300 360 hertz monitor smoothly you need to make sure you have at least 360 fps which just isn't happening in end games of fortnite so that's why a lot of people just end up sticking with their 240 hertz monitor but that's not the only reason why they do that there's also the battle between the ips and tn panels which i believe most 360 hertz monitors use the ips panel whereas most esports focused 240 hertz monitors use the tn panel like this zowie uh, monitor on screen right here now the difference between between the IPS panels and the TM panels is for IPS 
these are great for colors but not so much for performance whereas with tn panels these are the opposite they've got great performance but not so great on the colors so with the 240 hz monitor being easier to run in games like fortnite at end game and being consistent as well as being cheaper and better for performance in most cases that's why a lot of pros haven't upgraded to 360 hertz monitors or rather downgraded from a 360 hertz monitor back to their 240 hertz monitor oh and another thing that pro players don't use is rgb effects on their mouse and keyboards that's right after i noticed that a lot of pro players didn't have those flashy rgb effects on their keyboards i thought i'd have a bit of the research to find out why that was and it took me to this great blog post on screen titled what influences keyboard input speed and it says that running an rgb effect slash animation can take a great toll on the mcu it requires a lot of processing power and it'll delay other processes so essentially by turning off any rgb effects you've got on your mouse or your keyboard this is essentially eliminating the extra processing power those effects are using up on the keyboard so in turn you'll get lower input delay on your keyboard which is why the pros have done it which speaking of keyboards another very popular thing that pros do on their keyboards is install double movement software what this does is essentially turns your keyboard into a controller as with every key press you make with this double movement software you basically get an analog like movement so it's like your key presses are analog thumbsticks so you can essentially get controller like movement on keyboard without using an a controller and in order to get it all you have to do is get a free program like wooten or keys to x input these are the most popular ones wooten is very simplistic where you can simply turn it on and you're all good to go with a little bit of advanced features going on too whereas keys to x input is actually a lot more advanced as what you can do is you can modify certain strafe angles and configure the best overall movement for you from what i've noticed pros are using both of them so it comes down to personal preference but all you need to know that these both work great and they are 100 percent allowed to be used in fortnite you will not get banned from using them oh and for the last two things that pros do that you don't we've got two bonus ones for the end the first one is visual sound effects which can be found in the in-game settings of fortnite this essentially gives you visual sound effects on screen as well as being able to hear them in your ear but what's great about this is you can see where the direction of enemy footsteps are coming from obviously you'll be able to hear it in your ear but being able to see like an actual pointer directing you to it is obviously very very advantageous and on top of that as well it works for any other sounds so say if a player is healing say if there's a car a boat whatever in the direction you will be able to see it on your screen and it'll point you in the direction to it and the last thing is stretched resolution a lot of pro players are still using stretched res for the fps benefit and the bigger hitbox benefit here are some popular stretched resolutions that pros are using on screen oh and before you guys do leave be sure to check out this video on screen